Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back. I'm Boomi and today we are watching True Facts Sea Stars by Zefrank1. Yes, this is his uh, latest upload and I'm guessing this is all about sea stars, obviously. Um, I think they're more commonly called the starfish. To be perfectly honest, now that I think about it, I'm not even sure if those two are the same. Um, yeah, I... I don't have much uh, stories when it comes to starfishes. The only one that I can remember is there's this one time where me, my brother, and a couple of our friends went out uh, when it was in low tide. We went out to the beach just, just over yonder and we picked up a couple of starfishes and we had them race. Some of it died because of dehydration, some of that died because I think it was one of our friends put it in fresh water but eventually most of the starfishes that we caught after we raced them we just threw it back to the ocean and it was that um, aside from that yeah I don't have much experiences about them so I'm gonna let Z Frank talk me through this so remember if you like my reaction don't forget to leave a like let me know your thoughts on the video down in the comment section below and consider subscribing we are trying to get to a thousand subs by the end of the year so hopefully you guys can help me out with that by subscribing also don't forget to leave your suggestions on what i should check on next that being said let's go ahead and watch the video this episode is sponsored by brilliant a better way to learn millions of years ago the ancestor of sea stars and the other echinoderms thought screw it i want to be a circle yeah the problem was this is this is like the white ones, the two white ones are the ones that we found in the beach. Wasn't a circle, and even today its descendants most often start their lives out as two-sided bilateral babies. But evolution can do magical things if you get it drunk enough, and as these <laughs> larvae grow, a second baby, <laughs> True. a round baby, starts to grow inside them. The second baby kind of eats the original baby and then bursts out into the world. That's one way to do it. This Aww, new body so plan cute. of echinoderms has radial symmetry and is a marvel of engineering. First off, the skeletons of echinoderms are made out of this crap. <laughs> it looks like a bag of evidence from when they finally arrest the tooth fairy. These pieces <laughs> are called ossicles and they're made by cells that are almost like little 3D printers. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes and often look like something you might find oh, on the tray at Satan's cool. dentist. Up close, you can see that these ossicles are made out of a porous honeycomb mesh of magnesium calcite. Yeah. All those little holes allow tissue to grow inside them and to connect them to other ossicles in a kind of 3D jigsaw puzzle. It's a little like Evolution got a model airplane kit, but where the pieces weren't labeled, so there was nothing left to do but sniff the glue and get creative. The resulting <laughs> skeletons can be quite flexible, like those oh, in the, that was a the good one. star, for example. Or when they're fused together, they can form the solid dome or test of a sea urchin. But these parts aren't just internal. You can see them on the surface of the sea star as well, in the form of spines or these little crazy things called pedicellari. They might not look like much, but you'll see. In the sea star, the skeleton <laughs> right. forms a body cavity, as you can see with this one, who's had a bit of a rough day. This cavity is filled with organs. Oh, this is essentially <laughs> sea. That was the the thick starfish, right? The one uh, it was memed a while back. <laughs> I think. A bit of a rough day. This cavity. Yeah, it has a thick ass. Look at that thing. Cavity <laughs> is filled with organs in what is oh, essentially man. seawater. But listen, this isn't just some star-shaped water balloon. Hidden in there is one of the most oh. advanced hydraulic systems found in nature. Look that here. thing on is the top loaded. Of stars, you'll find a little nipply thing. It looks like where you'd put the pin in to blow up a ball of sport. This is called the madreporite. Too close, Jerry. This looks naughty. <laughs> uh, this one's better. It's like a yearbook uh. shot. The madreporite is essentially a valve I haven't noticed a series that. of canals. The canals are connected to rows of these little tube-like nubbins. The top parts sit inside of the sea star and the bottom parts stick out. Here you can see where the little canal runs down the length of the arm. And these here are the little sticky out bits. Two groups of muscles control the flow of water within these little tubes. One group pushes water down and elongates them. The other yeah, the little them legs. by pushing water back up to the top. These tubed feet, as they're called, run down the length of each arm in a groove. Mm -hmm. These grooves are often protected by spines, and sometimes they can even close up. <laughs> it's like a dream that a dentist would bring to therapy. 
In sea stars, <laughs> one of the functions of these tube feet is walking. Sometimes the tips of the feet are pointy, and up close they can look like an old man in a cold pool. This style of tip is especially good for digging around and burying yourself in the sand. So well, this dumb. one is doing it all fancy. In other species, these tube feet end in these sort of disc shapes. Looks a bit like an elephant that tried to snort a frisbee. These dicks, <laughs> discs, sorry, can secrete a kind of a glue as well as an anti-glue. This allows the sea stars. Oh, that that freaks me out. I've seen one of those before. Um, not exactly that. I'm not sure if it's the same. Oh, it's probably a different species of starfish where it has a very small body that that has a lot of appendages. That one freaks me the hell out. On current. Science hippies believe that these feet operate more or less independently, following a set of simple rules. Hold on until you're stretched too far and then let go, then swing forward and reattach. These simple rules can lead to two styles of walking. In crawling, the tube feet are all kind of doing their own thing. It's slow, but it gets the job done. Yeah. But they also have a get me the hell out of here sort of walk. In the right <laughs> conditions, clusters of feet start moving at the same uh. time and it creates a faster bouncing style of movement. In the world of sea stars, this is a bit like a gallop. Now, relatives of the sea stars, the brittle stars, felt like this way of walking didn't quite have enough pep. Instead of using... Yes, that one. Well, I don't know if it was just five appendages. I, I, I seem to recall more. But yeah, that one is scary to me. Use their arms in a sort of breaststroke with a leading erection. And they're good at it too. When they get going, they're pretty quick. To change direction, they don't turn. They just lead with a different arm. I mean, they're not facing in any particular direction yeah, because they don't true. have a face. And that's that what happens true. when you forget to evolve a head. <laughs> they can be quite cute, especially when they're Oh yeah, it is cute. This one, he's adorable. But look yeah. at this right here. I know what you're thinking. Why does that fish look so freaked out? It's just a harmless <laughs> little brittle star. <laughs> no, just wait till you hear what happened to Marjorie. But first, a message about our sponsor. If you well, like learning as well, all right, let's mind, let's get brilliant. You want to do it because it's my best friends and brilliant 200 feet minding your own business. Okay, here Got we go. Distracted and wound up in the wrong neighborhood. And look, a brittle star just reaches up and grabs her. She gets away from that one, but the problem is she's surrounded. They're freaking yeah, there are a lot of them. For Marjorie, <laughs> that's what you get if you don't pay attention. Is that a squid? Don't worry, she gets away. Just kidding. She dies. Oh, oh damn. damn. Brittle stars are quite aggressive. One finds a dead fish and suddenly it's a full on rumble. Look, <laughs> that one's getting away. Run away! <laughs> I digress. Now, brittle stars uh. do have tubed feet. They just don't use them for walking. Instead, it turns out that tubed feet can be used to do all sorts of things. For one, they can absorb oxygen and be used for breathing. Your foot can't do that. Your foot's boring. And it's not just breathing either. On the tips yeah, of the my arms, foot can't do that. stars have a cluster of thin, <laughs> wispy, modified tubed feet. These seem to have chemoreceptive abilities that can sense concentrations of different molecules in the water around them. Now, they don't have a central brain butt. Sorry, central brain. But instead, they have a distributed <laughs> nervous system. Uh, that, those jokes never get old. Parts of the arms can sense and react to stimuli on their own. Bigger decisions, like which way to move, are made by integrating signals across all of the arms. And it's not just touch and chemical signals. You see that little orange thing? You know what that is? It's a freaking eye. Each arm has a freaking eye on the end. How crazy is that? Is there really an eye? tell them not to point and stare. That's just how the sea star do. If they ever evolve faces like a people, this is what you'd be looking at. <laughs> right before you got a tube foot up your... Well, this compound <laughs> eye sits on, you'll never guess this, oh, it a is modified an tubed foot. Up close, you can see that it's a cluster of photoreceptive cells, which look a bit like something you might see. Well, in it's a type form. of an eye, at see? least. Sea stars see, but they're not crazy good at the seeing thing. You know, you wouldn't want their help with a jigsaw puzzle, but it's probably good enough to help the sea star get its bearings. An eye on each arm means that sea stars can have a near 360 degree simultaneous field of vision. Can't sneak up on the sea star. Sea stars sneak up on you. That Some species cool. have even fancier bits. The sea star Linkia levigata is an eye that is surrounded by darkened, really, again, all right, tube feet. I really feel like we could make a case for dropping the word feet. feet. These darkened but see-through tubes seem to act like sunglasses. And look at that. They can close their eye all the way. They can friggin' wink. With the help of their sensory tubes and little eyes, sea stars can search around for things to eat. Different species are looking for different things. 
preferably something they can catch, which does limit it a bit. Some of them just sort of sift through crap that they find in the great litter box of the ocean floor. Mud stars full on bury themselves and eat mouthfuls of it. Their mouths are already pointed that way and they don't have to move that far, <laughs> so that's good. The downside that's is they're true. eating mud. Other species prefer coral, which sometimes comes on a stick. It's like if you found a shish kebab the size oh, of a palm cool. tree. Just climb on and start eating. Oh, that is cool. Top. I've never These seen that before. They really have teeth or the kind of mouth you can chew with. So instead, they evert their stomach, which is a fancy science word for saying turns the insides the outsy. The stomach then just starts digesting on the outside. Oh. Sucks for the coral, horrible way to die. And it just hugs the coral. If a sea star has a taste for a stupid clam, it can use its little suction cup feet to pry apart the shell wide enough so that it can stick its stomach no. in there and go to work. I know what you're thinking. My stomach can't no. do that. Well, not with that attitude. Have a bowl Damn. of chili and a bottle of Southern Comfort. That's a lot of legs, though. Barf your stomach into a clam. Deep sea sea stars in the order Rosingida have a different technique. They suspension feed, curling their arms up into the water column and trapping things that float by with the help of their pedicillary. Oh, right. I still have to tell you about the pedicillary. As if they weren't crazy enough, sea stars are often covered in hundreds, if not thousands, of little pinchy pinchers. Sometimes they surround spines in clusters that can almost look like little pom-poms. Of death, up close you can see they're no joke, like little Whoa. bear traps, and they actually work. They come in different shapes and sizes. Some look like little tweezers, others can almost <laughs> look like clamshells. The Damn. thing is that they're mainly used to stop parasites from getting too cozy on the surface of the sea star. However, some species figured out how to use them to catch prey. In some cases, even small that is fish. Cool. Now the sea urchins were next cool. level with all this. They have three-sided pedicillary that are often on the end Wait. of long stalk. Sea urchins are a species of sea stars, or do they have? Do they just have like similar? Um, how do you call this? Similar parts? Huh. Fox. Up close, they can sometimes look like forceps. In the flower sea urchin, these little jaws are covered in a membrane, which, when open, make them look like tiny round flowers. But when they're disturbed, they snap shut into a little star shape and deliver a toxin. It's crazy, right? It just gets yeah. weirder and weirder. They probably can evolve <laughs> to shoot them out like little drones. Uh. That already happened. When the collector urchin senses a predator is about, it ejects a whole bunch of its pedicillary into the water, and they just float around, chomping and injecting venom into anything they touch. <laughs> oh. It's like a little cloud of pain. Yeah. Anyway, while Brisingids use pedicillary to suspension, I need to remember that. Relative of sea stars, the crinoids figured out a different way to do it. Their arms have evolved into what basically can look like feathers. feathers. These arms are lined with tubed feet and mucus covered <laughs> Of silly. course it Little is. Particles get trapped and then move to the center of the arms, where tube feet sort of snot roll them into little balls and transport them down towards the <laughs> mouth. They just sort of sit there and let the food come to... Holy shit! It turns out that even though they can look like clumps of starving agave, Damn. some feather star crinoids can Son? get quite fidgety. Look at this one walking around on his fingertips. One group in the order Cometulida even figured out how to swim. Don't know Whoa, how to that, them. that that looks so cool. In the deep. That reminds me of um of one of those biblically accurate angel videos. If you haven't seen one, I suggest you go ahead and look it up. That is crazy looking. Ben, can you? Dad joke. Not the most elegant stroke. Looks a bit like a drowning burlesque dancer. <laughs> In any case, these feather star crinoids figured it out and they float or swim until they find a new place to grab on with those, well, the science hippies call them Siri. But come on, those are witch fingers. And if you know witch anything fingers. about witch fingers, you know how good they are at grabbing. Go ahead and clench your ass on a broom all you want, but you need that support up front. Don't teach you that in science school, do they, you science hippies? Another group of crinoids, the sea lilies, decided to go more like full-on plant with roots and all. They have a long stalk that attaches quite firmly to the sea floor. This holdfast keeps them anchored and in place, even when they're pummeled by strong currents. And it looks like an idyllic life, doesn't it? Beachfront yeah. property, palm tree, well, I guess you are the palm trees, <laughs> but overall a good setup to suspension feed in peace. If it weren't for these little bastards, these are sideroid sea urchins, and they look a bit like the ball they use in soccer for masochists. Whoa. But the spiky bits aren't the problem, it's what's underneath. These sea urchins have a mouth that comes with five teeth-like things that can self-sharpen as they rub against each other. 
is terrifying. That's cool. This mouth part contraption is called Aristotle's Lantern, which explains why no one ever wanted to sleep <laughs> over at old Aristotle's. Most regular <laughs> urchins use this to scrape stuff like algae off rocks, but these sideroid urchins developed a taste for flesh, crinoid <laughs> flesh. So this right here is a it's straight out up for scene blood. from a crinoid horror film. It's, uh, well, the pacing is a bit slower than you might be used to. But let me tell you, if you speed things up a bit, you can see that an urchin will seriously f*** up a crinoid. Look at that, he totally ripped it apart. Oh, so damn. here's the crazy thing. Some of these sea lilies have evolved a daring escape plan. At the base of their stalk, there are segments that they can it gets cut off. a special kind of connective tissue. Under threat, some sea lilies will fall down and break their stalks on purpose, and then freaking crawl away. Yep. <laughs> Look at that. It runs away like a mop that finally had enough of your shit. It's amazing. <laughs> and that's the problem uh, with living in the ocean. There's lots of things that want to eat you down there. Look at this oh, damn! treating that brittle star like it's a pull-apart dinner yep. roll. And that's what happens when you have all those sticking out bits. It's dangerous. <laughs> it's why they don't have dog parks in nudist colonies. <laughs> You're thinking about it, aren't you? Now, if you aren't good at running away, which I oh, think wow. established Is that a seagull? Sea stars, you need other ways to protect yourself. You can cover yourself with sharp spines like this one in the genus Zoroaster, or the goat of spines, the crown of thorns sea star. But there's always an animal that figures out how to get around things yeah. like that. This Wait, what is that? This here doesn't give a crap about your thorny thorns. Now the cushion star, Teraster tessellatus, got that a boy is thick. It evolved that boy is to plump. create and expel toxic slime from a little hole on the top of its body. Not a little bit of slime, either. Like, a lot of slime. <laughs> That's you should a see lot what it does of... when it likes you. But sea stars have a legit <laughs> magic trick. They have this special uh. collagenous tissue throughout their body that they can harden or soften fairly quickly. So, for example, they can crawl into a crack when they're sort of limp and then stiffen up so they're wedged in there and you can't pull them out. But they can also use this collagenous tissue in the way that that ah, sea yeah. lady did. They can remove the arms. The arm so that an arm can be pulled off easily. A treat for the predator and the starfish doesn't die win-win. And it isn't just when they're attacked. If they have sea star wasting disease like these ones do, they will pull their own arm off in order to Whoa. save the rest. Yeah, you can see smart. The tissue immediately closes around the open wound that leads to the body cavity. The arms that are detached are still alive and will sometimes keep on searching for food and passing it back to a <laughs> mouth that doesn't exist. Now, of course, the second part of this magic trick is that they can grow their arm back. Yeah. They start by recreating the outer tip of the arm, the part that has the sensory bits, and then they start to fill in the middle. Here's how the trick works animals start out as little undifferentiated clumps of cells. These cells, stem cells, can become stem any sort cells, of tissue, yeah. a nipple, an eye. But in humans, for example, once they become that thing, they can't go back to being undifferentiated. Your nipple cannot turn into an eye, thank God. Thank sea God. star cells that are one thing <laughs> can go back and become something else. And that's how the sea star can regrow an entire arm using the cells from its body. Can it, can it grow... Like, is there a chance that a five-pointed sea star, if you cut one off, there's a chance that they grow more, not just one arm, so that they end up with more arms, essentially? Or is it always based on their, like, it's probably based on their biology, right? Based on their DNA, where if they're already coded to have five, like, let's say, arms, um, no matter how much you cut it, it will always grow back to five arms, right? What's even more amazing is that in some species, an arm that is broken off at the right segment can grow a whole rest of a starfish back. I know what you're thinking. Whoa. If they can do that, it's a hell of a lot simpler way of making babies than yeah. using dating apps. There yeah, are that a is few true. species of sea star, <laughs> like this one, Alistair Castor in Cygnus, that make more of themselves simply by splitting in two. The tiny little sea star Parvalastra vivipara can also do it so what? by ripping itself <laughs> apart. Instead, it is a hermaphrodite and fertilizes its own eggs inside of itself. The babies are cannibals and eat each other inside the parent's body as they grow, until the lucky ones burst out of holes on its parent's back. Sometimes kill yeah. them in the process. There's a baby photo for you. Leptosteris <laughs> polaris, on the other hand, gets into a little sex pile. 
I know what it looks like, but there are no <laughs> Starfish orgy. bits in there. The males uh. release their sperm and the females release their eggs. And when they're fertilized, the females curl up in a swirl and sit on their eggs like a beard might. But most species don't put in nearly that level of effort. Oh, Males that looks and females cool. just release their baby-making bits into the water, cross their little tube feet, and hope for the best. <laughs> Think of it like if human sperm looked like the seeds of a dandelion, and the eggs sort of came out like soap bubbles. A couple times a year, everyone just goes out on their balconies, maybe wearing a t-shirt and socks, a glass of rosé maybe, and then you just sort of let it go, try not to get caught in the back breeze. Ah, uh, the image. The image. I can't get it out no, of my head. Reverse it, Jerry. It's not the same thing. Uh. Well, because I think it's reasonable <laughs> to think that someone might want a dog park in a nudist colony, but then think better of it because the dogs would. Right. But I'm saying that no reasonable person would put a nudist colony inside of a dog park. Well, for one, the infrastructure. Where yeah. the nudist shower, Jerry, in the drinky fountain. <laughs> Well, yes, the dogs are technically nude. All right, fine, Jerry. Dog parks are nudist colonies for dogs. Idiot. Tell me, we talked about this. Well, I don't care if it feels good. You don't do it in public. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Mr. Frank never disappoints. Never disappoints. Ah, uh, I should. I should really start. Watching more Zy Frank videos, it's just a good time. Oh man, alright. <laughs> I, mean, well, I don't know what to say really. It, starfishes are just cool. Well, sea stars in particular are just cool. Really cool. So, yeah. That's just kind of it for me today, guys. Link to my Twitter is down in the description below. Go to check it out if you want to. And if you're new here and enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like. Let me know your thoughts on the video down in the comment section below and consider subscribing. Again, we are trying to get to a thousand subs this year, so hopefully you guys can help me out with that. Um, also, don't forget to leave your suggestions on what I should check out next. That being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye!